In this video, I'm going to cover how to practice whether you're doing meditation or pranayama. Hi, my name is Kira of the Eagle Institute, and this is an introduction specifically to pranayama, which means to um, direct or control our breath or our life force. So prana means to your breath or your life force, and yama means to direct or control. But everything that I'm covering this video also applies to any style of meditation practice, especially sitting or standing meditation. So why breath and specifically pranayama is so vital and why breath is included in every meditation style is because it has such a profound impact and effect on us on multiple levels. First of all, from a physical level, breath affects every single system in our body, and there's 21 of them. So we normally think breathing, you know, obviously we need to breathe to stay alive, but, you know, we just kind of think, well, maybe if we don't get enough breath, maybe we'll be tired. But there, it affects so much more than that. It affects your hormone levels. It affects the amount of, like, stress hormones or cortisol that you have in your bloodstream. It affects um, your kidneys, your liver, your gallbladder, all your endocrine system. It affects the way your brain operates, the fight or flight response, and it affects your digestion in a very physical way. Your breathing is actually responsible, deep breathing, for pumping your lower intestines and your, in, um, sorry, your intestines and even your stomach to a certain extent. So if you're not breathing properly, it changes and affects all these things um, in not a good way. But if you're breathing in a really healthy way, it has a positive impact on all those things. Now, breath also affects us mentally and emotionally as well. And intuitively, most people kind of know this. Like the first thing we tell someone if they're kind of freaking out or if they're upset or something traumatic just happened is take a deep breath. Because <laughs> we know intuitively that that will reset us and calm us down. But their relationship between breath and our emotions and even the thoughts that we think and from a Western perspective is still very much in its early stages compared to the Eastern perspective. So um, in the Eastern perspective, they've studied this for thousands of years, maybe not in the way we would look at it as Western study, but certainly in documenting and being observant of how if I do a certain technique or change my breath in certain ways, how does that affect mentally, physically, and emotionally? And there is a lot of um, books and not well-known manuscripts that are written in uh, foreign languages that have not been translated into English that cover a lot of this. And there are some very good ones that have been translated into English or written in English by people with a very traditional Eastern training. So the techniques that I cover, especially with people at a beginner stage, are all intended to correct imbalances. And it's amazing, like I'm continually amazed <laughs> with what just doing some simple changes in breathing can do for mental, physical, and emotional well-being. Even for people that are in pretty drastic and traumatic um, or headed you know, to some serious health challenges or maybe experiencing some pretty strong, um, unpleasant mental and emotional experience as well. So breathing is very sensitive, but it works two ways, as I've kind of covered. So if we are stressed or maybe even depressed or feeling anger or negative emotions, there is breathing that is associated with that. And we can create those feelings by breathing inappropriately. And one thing that happens a lot of times is people, because of the work they do or just lack of awareness, are sitting in postures that, you know, you're kind of hunched forward or maybe leaning to one side or the other and unintentionally are putting themselves in a position that the body is interpreting as stress. And therefore, it starts running the stress programs mentally and emotionally. 
So the brain will go start to go into fight or flight. It'll start to shut down some of the higher functioning, um, creative thinking, logical thinking. And it, um, cause it's preparing itself for a physical fight. Now, obviously today challenges that people and the stress in that we face in the is from mental and emotional far more than it is from a real physical threat. So it's really important to work on posture and to reverse those cycles. So that can be done very easily through deliberately changing the breath. And that's what pranayama is. It is a set of techniques that direct our breath. And in the introductory stages, it is about correcting problems and imbalances that create the mental, emotional, and physical states. And you know what, I'm gonna add in here karmic stuff as well, because my experience has been with this is that I've been able to change karmic patterns. And all karma is, is something that, it's a habit that you're running over and over again. It's either something that you've, if you believe in past lives, have done in a past life or done in this life where we make a decision about something and we keep doing it over and over and over again, expecting a different result. So by changing the way we breathe, it changes the way we think, it changes our emotional responses, it changes muscle memory and cellular memory in the body and can release all that so we can make different decisions and different choices. So there's, I'll do another video just on, on karma and how to erase karma because that's a bigger topic, but those are just some basics and highlights. So one of the most important parts about pranayama or any meditation practice, this applies to all meditation practice, but also just to your own health and well-being every day is the way you stand and the way you sit. Your posture changes the way you feel and the way you think, and it happens very quickly. So I've done re many studies of this um, with groups of you know anywhere from five to a hundred people, and we, I have them you know tell me what their mental emotional state is, scale of one to ten. Ten being I feel awesome, you know. Sorry, ten being I feel you know I'm stressed and I have been for the past three months continuously. And one being I've experienced no stress in the past three months. And a majority of people are like eight or higher. The average is 8.8 .8 when I've done these. And when I get them to change their posture, change their breath in under three minutes or in three minutes, people tend to drop at least three points. And if they repeat it, they usually drop another two. So cutting it in half or more just for changing breath and posture. So let's look at posture. So I'm going to show you a picture here of what good posture is. Now this person, this lady is sitting cross-legged. You do not have to be able to sit cross-legged. What I liked about this picture is it clearly shows the, her back position and her neck position. And you can see that the back is, everything's built, you know, from the ground up. So she's sitting square on her um, buttocks and pelvis. So the pelvis isn't tipped forward or backwards. So she's not arched backwards or an over arch in her lower back. And then the spine is stacked um, evenly. The shoulders are over the hips and the neck is over in a, in a pretty good line there as well. I would say that the neck should be slightly back further, but the, overall, this is a very good picture. Um, if you were sitting in a chair, you would want your legs a little bit lower. This is above 90 degrees, so you would want your legs at 90 degrees. So basically, uh, if you, she put her legs out in front of her, um, flat on the floor that would be 90 degrees and then if you're sitting in a chair you want your knees to your feet at 90 degrees and your feet sitting flat on the floor and that is a good posture now what this does is it um, changes our mental and emotional state so it cuts off, you know, you even think a lot less. <laughs> you stop obsessing about things. And I've done this experiment for myself multiple times. Like I'll start to think negative thoughts or I'll be worried, start to worry about something and I check my posture and invariably it's like some, some version of weirdness. <laughs> Usually for me in my upper back because I corrected a lot of the lower back things. 
but it um, invariably I have something weird going on usually from you know the chest up and I correct my posture I correct my neck and then I find you know my my alignment in my lower spine between my say my hips and my ribs changes and then all of a sudden the negative thoughts go away I start to feel better I mean it really is as simple as this now the challenge for most people is is that their muscles on some places are too tight and in other places either too loose or too weak so it's really hard to sit in that position so how you work with that is you do it over time it's going to take constant reminding yourself and constant correction so if you do start a pranayama practice or you currently do one or a different kind of meditation practice start at the beginning make sure you're starting in the best alignment and position possible when you get tired you'll slump forward and then take a little rest and then go back to really good position again now you'll notice right now that my neck is a little bit off I was actually born with a neck defect and I'm working that out right now it's actually gotten better but you would want your your head and neck a little bit more centered than what mine is right now so that's how you work with it you just continue to correct it and one way that I love doing this is finding a little cue so if say you work in an office maybe every time you stand up and every time you sit down you're like what's my posture maybe you don't get up and down that a lot um, maybe there's a window or a picture or a doorway that you go through a lot so every time you do that you check yourself what's your posture and if you don't work in an office you are doing something more flexible maybe you drive a lot maybe it's every time you come to a stoplight what's my posture or if you get in and out of your car a lot maybe every time a time I get in and get out I check my posture so just find something that you're doing it regularly and habitually throughout the day it makes a tremendous tremendous difference if you just do that and nothing else you will start to feel better but you can do even more than that with adding in some of the stuff on pranayama so a slower breath um, our breath speed is extremely important and a slower breath is associated with not only a longer life but feelings of mental emotional well-being as well as overall physical health and the quality of your breath also matters there's a lot of patterns within the breath so you can still have a slow breath and not have a healthy breath so you may be a really fit athlete do a lot of aerobic exercise you will have a hopefully a deeper breath than normal which will slow it down but within that you can still have a lot of negative patterns I know I was a competitive swimmer breath is obviously very important because if you don't breathe right you can literally die you can drown but doing that sport created a lot of negative patterns for me in breathing because you have to breathe in really quickly and you exhale either very slowly or you hold your breath a lot now in and of those selves those things are good techniques but when they become a habit that you do it over and over again those are things that need to be corrected because they do cause issues usually stress and anxiety and I've worked with a lot of athletes that either because they have a lot of lactic acid in their body or because they do specific holding breaths um, in their sport and they're not counteracting that they are experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety outside of competition or training time so it's not just about lung capacity it's about how you breathe and for people that maybe aren't that healthy or aren't that fit this is a great way for you to get in the door and start correcting some of those patterns now yogis that are really knowledgeable that have had you know tens of thousands of hours of training on this they can predict uh, what problems someone's going to have in their life by the problems that and the issues that they have in their breathing they can look at you and say oh this and this and this is off you're, you're going to have financial problem you're going to get bullied um, you're going to have liver problems you're going to have a hard time speaking your truth you're going to have a hard time um, connecting with other people emotionally you're going to have a hard time you know with um, you know whatever health challenges and usually these are all interrelated like usually we don't have one if it gets on too far we usually have multiple issues so 
It's a really amazing thing to do, just working on your posture and working on your breath. So um, when you do deep breathing, another thing to really keep in mind, and this is how to set yourself up successfully for starting pranayama practice or even any meditation practice. You want to be aware of the environment around you. The goal of any of this stuff is to calm yourself down mentally, physically, and emotionally. And when we do, first of all, that's when the feelings of well-being come, but also that's when we can have the clarity and the, in, um, I want to say, a, a you're able to take a step back from the things in your life and look at them with a bit more neutrality. So... Um, when you do this, you want to have an environment that, especially in the beginning stages, that's conducive to that. So what does that mean? You want to have an environment that's quiet, that um, you're not going to get interrupted, and where um, you can obviously sit or you can stand um, properly and it's kind of comfortable. You don't want to have like too many flashing lights or too many distractions around you. As you get better and better at this, you can meditate and do pranayama in any environment because um, you will have the control and the focus to do that and the outside stuff won't affect you. But for most beginners, that is just too hard. So let's make it easier than it is for most people. It's already difficult to focus and concentrate, so let's make that a little bit easier. So. We're going to do a little technique together and we're going to do something that is just a baseline indicator. I mean, it's not a perfect indicator, but it will give you some idea of the general vicinity that you're in to begin with. And as we do this technique, um, I'm actually going to time you. So go to a place where you can either sit or stand like I just covered and bring yourself into a seated position. And what we're gonna do for this technique is we're going to measure or count the number of breaths that you do in three minutes. Now, for someone that's never done this before or done, ever done any meditation before, three minutes is gonna seem like a long time. But once you've done it a bit, three minutes is a breeze. <laughs> it's not hard. Um, and how you're going to count this is um, one inhale and one exhale is one breath. So you can either count inhale one, exhale one, or if you're breathing really fast, just pick one point during that whole cycle to count as one. Maybe it's as you start your inhale, maybe it's at, at the end of your inhale, you know, whatever makes sense to you. So let us begin. We are going to do three minutes of breathing. Inhaling, counting one. Exhaling, counting one. Good work, keep counting. Excellent work, keep counting.
excellent and the home stretch keep counting And then finishing off your exhalation breath and remember that number so I'll just go through with you quickly what those counts mean so between six breaths per minute or less is considered yogic that's you know um, ideal and you'll have a long life and I'm gonna actually explain the relationship between breath and long life after we go through this so most people that's a big challenge but maybe if you're a really fit athlete um, that may be possible for you or you may be in that range so between 19 and 30 is better than average so congratulations and um, if you're an athlete that's to be expected so it's not just about the number of counts. It's, as I said earlier, it's about the quality of each breath and specific criteria within the breath. So that might be something you wanna look at, especially if you're experiencing any stress or any um, anxiety or even something a little stronger, depression, anger, anything on that negative side, irritation on an ongoing basis, you would wanna look at the quality of the breath. If you're between 30 and 45, that is above average. So bit of a health concern. If it's in the low range, maybe not too much. Maybe you're just having a rough day. But if it's you know higher than that, um, you probably are experiencing some health challenges, maybe minor ones, nothing too serious. But definitely something you want to work at to bring that down. There's lots of improvement, lots of well-being physically and mentally and emotionally to be had by learning how to breathe slower and deeper. Now, if you are between 45 and 60, this is definitely a bit more of a concern. Um, if you are um, ex uh, under health care right now with any type of professional, it's something you probably want to mention to them. Uh, you can just you can even tell them about this video but that is an indicator that there are some challenges in the body nothing that I would you know unless you feel other symptoms that you know you'd want to do something like run off to the doctor right away but definitely something you want to mention and get looked at if you are 60 or higher that is definitely a concern um, I would go and see somebody about that fairly quickly and mention to them um, that your breath count is really high because that's not normal that's very very high and um, that can be an indicator if you've otherwise been healthy that you are getting sick your body's fighting something pretty hard or maybe there just is something going on that just hasn't been identified so I would go get that checked out now why the number of counts is or the count or the in less breaths is better <laughs> in yogic science um first of all high breath is an indicator of disease and, me and strain mental physical emotional we breathe in the upper chest when the body's in panic or stress or if it's unhealthy and posture can create a lot of this because if you think if you're hunched forward your lungs just can't move right right so that's why we look at posture to correct first but the other the other thing is that in yogic science our lifespan is determined by the amount of breaths that we have at birth and that kind of makes sense right so if someone who's sick they're going to shorten their life right even if they don't die of that disease it's going to put a lot of strain on the body so they will probably die at a younger age and people that experience a lot of stress definitely die younger than um, people that either are good at managing that or don't experience a lot of stress 
So slowing that breath rate down makes your life longer. Now, from a perspective of meditation, this is all about personal growth (laughs) and developing yourself as a human being. And if you want to use those words, advancing your consciousness. So a long life gives us time to learn more and to do better on this earth. The other thing it does is it gives us a better life experience while we're here while we're here because we will have a lot more time we're in positive mental and emotional states like appreciation or joy or enthusiasm or passion or love or all of those beautiful things that we love to have. So um, slowing that breath rate down gives you not only a longer life experience or at least a chance at one, but also um, a better experience as you go through. So I'm doing a series on this. There's a lot more on breath and the value and the importance of breath and little changes that a lot of people don't know about that you can make in the breath to make it feel better. Even if you're a yogi or go or regularly practice yoga, or maybe even you practice pranayama, a lot of people do the advanced techniques without um, going through the basics. And I mean, it's great if you're doing any techniques, but there's so much to be gained and, and benefit by correcting some of these things. And I've put together a little series. They're kind of like drills that'll help build help you to build that breathing that is both healthy and is going to, you know, give you all those other benefits as well. Now, pranayama is a set of techniques that um, have been, a lot of them have been written down that cover more than 400 different variations and they work like vitamins. So you will have some that will help heat the body up, help cool the body down, relax you so you can go to sleep, Um, get you, stimulate you in a way that you can focus with more clarity. Some that help different parts of the body, help liver functioning, help digestion, help different parts of the endocrine system, and overall just give you that sense of health and well-being. One of the other most important things that good pranayama does is it builds up our resilience and our stamina. It strengthens your nervous system when it's done properly. And I wanna emphasize that when it's done properly. So that's why it's so important to work with someone who's really knowledgeable about these techniques. I've talked to people that have said, hey, I was told to do this technique and it created a lot of stress in me. It's because they didn't correct the basics first. And they said, oh, I'm in good good shape or this person's in good shape. They just went to giving them an advanced technique that re, Um, that overemphasized challenges that they already had in their breathing. So it is so important to learn to do the basics first, even if you are really fit. That's where the value is to be gained. So stay tuned for our next um, live stream. We're going to do a little short series where we'll be covering some basics on how to get started with pranayama. But if you know you want to do this or you want to learn more, we do do, I teach private sessions with people one-on-one, whether it's to improve their health or to um, help with bigger issues such as karmic issues. And we have varying programs with that. So if you just want to know more or you want some more resources, we do have some stuff on our website, theeagleinstitute.com. And please leave your questions below, um, any comments below, because I will take those into account. And of course, you can always private message me on the website. There are several ways that you could do that. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next time.